Welcome back to the channel. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, we'll be exploring the test menu in TechnoParrot, and we'll talk about how it is used to calibrate your controller and how it can be helpful in our TechnoParrot gaming experience. However, before we do, please know that we do not support software piracy, and of course, we can't forget our arbitrary legal requirements. This video is for educational purposes only, and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. Before we get too deep into this video, I'd like to say that this video assumes you've seen my video titled, TechnoParrot for Noobs. If you've not, do not worry, as I've linked to that video in the description for your convenience. It's important to understand that this video is regarding how to configure or calibrate the arcade that TechnoParrot loads, and our last video shows how to set up the TechnoParrot program itself. Assuming you've set up TechnoParrot and have some games installed, let's launch TechnoParrot and select a game. At this time, I'm going to select one of my favorite games to demo on TechnoParrot called Aliens Extermination. This is a light gun arcade game. Aliens runs very well in TechnoParrot, and if you have issues with aiming in the game, calibrating the controls can be very helpful. After selecting our arcade ROM, but before we fully launch into the game, we'll need to verify what buttons we've assigned our menu keys to. When reviewing our settings, I see that I've assigned my test key to my keyboard's zero key, the select key to my keyboard's number nine key, and the two volume keys to my controller's shoulder buttons. We'll use these bindings to enter and navigate the arcade service and testing menus. Now that we've taken note of how our controller is set up, we'll launch our arcade ROM, let it load fully, and we'll enter the test menu. Please remember that some of these games take longer than others to load. This is because each time you load and run a game, TechnoParrot is loading the arcade software for that particular game. It's important to be patient, and remember that the more complex the game is, the longer it will take to load. However, once the game is loaded, you'll be able to enter the arcade test and service menu by pressing the test key. Once in the test menu of Aliens, let's take a look around, and please keep in mind that each arcade will be different with different options and settings. You'll need to review the menu on the arcade cab that you've loaded to fully understand how to navigate that cab and fully exploit the settings available. I'd also like to point out that in TechnoParrot's native controls for this arcade software, we do have options that are available to us that are also available in the Aliens Arcade test menu. Personally, I make most of the adjustments I can in the TechnoParrot menu, and anything I do not have an option to change in the TechnoParrot menu, I then use the menus that come within the game itself. With that said, at the bottom of the Aliens test menu, we'll see instructions that inform us that we can use the volume controls to navigate the menu and the select key to make selections. When testing this out, we did see that I'm able to navigate the menu with our volume keys that I've got bound to the shoulder buttons on my game controller. If you've bound your volume controls to different buttons, use those, and you should have the same result. If not, then double check what buttons you've got assigned to the volume controls and make any adjustments needed for your setup. As this is the first time I've been inside the arcade's test menu, I'm going to look around a little and see if there are any settings I'd like to change, as well as familiarize myself with using the menu system. However, in reality, our goal is to find the calibrations for aiming the gun controls, as I'd like to fine-tune those adjustments. When reviewing the options in this menu, the gun adjustments option stood out as an area that would have the gun aiming calibration tools that I'm looking for. However, after making that selection, I can see that this area is for other firing options. I may adjust the gun power option later if I feel the need, but for now, we'll skip this section. If we enter the section titled System Tests menu, we'll be given four testing options, with the first option being titled Gun Test and Calibrate. I'll be selecting that option as it corresponds to the gun aiming tool I wish to use to fine-tune the controls I'm using. After entering that menu, we're given the calibration tool we've been looking for, and if we look at the center of the screen, we can see that we are given basically three options. The bottom option is for gun input and output options. I'm unsure as to what this is referring to, but I do know that the volume controls will affect those. The center option is for changing LED settings and something called a test kicker. Again, I'm not sure what those are for, but it looks as if our action buttons affect those options. 
Now, with all of that out of the way, we can see that our top option tells us that if we wish to calibrate the left gun, then we need to press the left player one, and if we wish to calibrate the right gun, then we'll need to press the right player start button. I'll press the start key that I've programmed on my controller that corresponds to the left player, also known as player one. After moving around and verifying the stick on my controller that corresponds to my player's gun, I'll enter the calibration tool by pressing the player's corresponding start key, and that will open the calibration tool. Once we are in the calibration settings, we will move the stick in the direction the tool indicates and then press the fire key. This will be done in the left direction, then the right, followed by the up and down, respectively. The tool is very intuitive and seems to be easy to understand and use. Once you have aligned and adjusted each direction, you will be kicked back into the previous menu. I'd also like to point out that if you wish to simply test and verify that your controls are registered, this is the area where you are able to do so. As you can see, when I move my stick, the left player or player one crosshairs move, and when I press the buttons on my controller that correspond to my action keys, like the trigger for my gun or flamethrower, those actions are indicated to be working. Once you're done mucking about, you'll need to back out of each menu until given the exit to game option. Once you select exit to game, the new settings should take effect, and you can now enter a game and take advantage of the new calibrations for your controls. In conclusion, TechnoParrot is very easy to use, and the launcher interface gives you a great deal of control over setting options. TechnoParrot does all of this without taking away from any of the arcade software's functionality. This is very convenient when you need to calibrate your controls for driving or shooting games. From what I can tell, the more popular the game, the more it has been integrated into TechnoParrot, and the games that aren't as popular aren't as integrated into this launcher. That said, regardless of the game, you always have the original arcade software settings that you can adjust. If you've stuck around until now, I'd really like to take a minute and thank you for checking out this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found the video informative. If you have, or even if you've not, I'd like to ask that you hit that like and notifications button. If you've not done so, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd also love to hear from you, so please leave me a comment. I do my best to personally reply to them all. These are all small clicks of the mouse for you, but those small clicks go a very long way in helping this small channel beat the YouTube algorithm, and they help this community grow. If you really want to help support this channel, I'm on buy me a coffee, or feel free to leave me a super thanks. Regardless, thank you.